Hello, you two. How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing wonderful, enjoying yourself, and watching out for your family and your friends. Making sure they okay, because you never know when they're not here tomorrow. Now, this is about um, my chat with the Crisis Hotline. I was wondering, what kind of um, training do y'all have? Do y'all have degrees? Yes, we do have degrees, and we're trained in crisis counseling. Oh, okay. What kind? We're trained to be crisis counselors. We're not therapists, but we can still have conversations with people and talk to them about different issues that they're having and provide them with resources and support. No, I'm basically asking what kind, what's the name of the degree? Well, uh, it completely depends. Most people here have degrees in psychology, sociology, um, issues with social work, anything that has to do with mental health. Um, th that would be the sort of degrees that we would have. Oh, okay. That's what type of patients they deal with. I got off the phone with him, but before I did... I had a chat with him about, I called the line to see what type of, what type of uh, information and stuff they can provide you when you in a suicidal feeling. Well, the woman that I talked to, she basically listened. She gave a few suggestions. She was pretty good. You know, she gave like, some suggestions, well, don't you feel you should go to a therapist or, you know, she was giving suggestions like that. Now, what I have noticed about it was, basically, after you talk to them for a little while, ask them some questionnaire, a questionnaire. Like, for instance, how long have you been feeling like this? How long have you been feeling suicidal? Tell me a little bit of history of your life. Have you ever attempted to kill yourself before? Have, <clears throat> what type of things that make you happy? Whether it's music, puzzles, um, crosswords, um, you know, stuff like that. Better to get a understanding is this person just want to harm their self or they're going to harm others because I think that's kind of important to know because dumb questionnaires will probably actually help that person to figure out what kind of advice to give a person that is in suicidal thoughts are harming others if they give a questionnaire what and, they, and get a little history about their past. And have they ever committed suicide before? Have they ever attempted to commit suicide before? Have they... Stuff like that. Because... I suffer from depression. So, with that being said... But I always have friends around me. And when I need that but this person I don't know if they're paid for do that or they just volunteer but he didn't tell me exactly what degree because when you don't see no it's certain degrees for health it's certain degrees for therapy I know you have to have several different ones so he didn't really he was on kind of seemed like he was on, on the defensive so, the woman that I talked to the first time, she seemed like she probably would actually be able to help a person. But if they say some things like that, maybe that would help Father Long. Now, second person I talked to, because the phone disconnected, was a woman that was like, the second one, she wasn't really that much help. She just like kept saying, this is for immediate people in danger of suicide. But she still listened. So, I just think if 
you in the middle of like you feel like it are you emotional are you you feel like you just don't want to get out of that that is depression if you don't if you feel like if you feel like even if it's just one thought of doing something bad to yourself I feel like that person still should be able to talk to you and talk you down. Regardless, if you admit it, once, like if you have something to harm yourself with right then or there. Because I have met a person that actually called a suicide hotline a long time ago. And she actually had the knife in her hand. And if I didn't call her and go over... And see how she's doing because she was talking to me earlier that day. She probably wouldn't be here today. So that's why I'm saying they don't know what the person is doing. They that's something else to do. Ask what they're doing right now. Do they have anything in their hand? Do they have anything that they might want to find out? Information. Information is key. It's very much key. Because It's just very important. Next lady I talked to, I was just I was disconnected, so I called back. And then something happened. The lady gave me a number for a person that was supposed to be like a therapist type thing. That guy, he was just trying to brush me off and send me to give me a number to call a therapist. And so I called back that number again. And then I talked to another lady, and that lady was like, "No, this is for." crisis suicide hotline only it's not maybe you should call a therapist i said do you know a number to a therapist she didn't give me that she's like no i don't know that and so i'm like and that woman she was like no it's only for this and that. i'm like now if a person will sit there and call a crisis hotline and don't tell them they in a minute want to do it right then and they just want somebody to talk to. And that, you know, talking to them, you'll find more out. Maybe they are a little bit secretive. Don't want to tell them what they was planning on doing. Talk to them a little bit. Then get into detail and talk about their past. Talk about in the past, have they ever did it. You know, getting a little background information. But you got to get them calm first. You got to get them to trust you first. Yes, it's a phone call. It's a hotline. So... This dude, y'all just, I just think that people need to do better. That guy that just shot up a bank and he was seeing a therapist. That's what, he just said that he had, he was like mental health. What kind of therapist did he have? What kind of therapist did he have? Was he on medication? What kind? And I think I think I heard somewhere about long term use that it wasn't good for long term use. Is this a right now thing? And I met a playtime therapist. She did not believe into giving young kids psychiatric medicine because she told me that it actually makes things worse that it's best to be going to a therapist and that works with kids better than just giving them medicines i have met a girl a woman that had two kids she was overwhelmed and well her son told her to go to her room and she did but besides that he was on um, some medicines for hyper. I can't think of the name of it. He was like very hyper. But to me, he didn't seem like he was very hyper. <clears throat> he just always like, always walked slow and just didn't like, nothing really fazed him to me. And then the day that he didn't take his medicine, he seemed like a normal kid. He seemed like a normal kid. Kids are hyper. So if you want to just give some kids some medicine just because they're hyper, that's just wrong. Because the little boy, he seemed fine to me. And then on top of that, 
one time, they, the parents, they couldn't even remember if the boy took his medicine. And then they realized that the little boy threw the, threw the medicine out of the toilet. But I'm like, I'm telling them, y'all better call 911. What the wrong wrong with y'all? And so I asked the little boy, did you do, did you throw the medicine in the toilet? You can get a job. He said, yeah. But I'm like, if he didn't, if he would have took all the medicine, then it was just like daily things. And they didn't even monitor him how he took it. And for that, if your child is on medicine for any kind of thing like mental issues, you need to weigh the cost. You need to find out your child really need it. Or just find a good therapist where he'll be calmer and understand and make sure that he needs to be on that type of medicine. I'm just saying, that's just my opinion. Yes, I'm not. No, I am not a doctor. No, I'm not a therapist. No, I'm not a crisis on lady or none of that. I have no degrees on anything. But just because I don't have degrees on anything, when I was younger, a lot of people always came to me for advice. And I always watched movies that talks about documentaries that talk about depression and other things. Did that makes me a doctor? No, it doesn't. But I think a person that suffers from depression themselves know more and better ways how they feel in if someone was a little nicer, how they will feel better. That's just my opinion. Y'all have a great one. Watch out for your families. Take care of them. And if you have any mental issues, please seek help. Because we don't need any more mass shootings. Please, if you know somebody else that might need help, please make sure they take go and get help. Y'all take it easy and take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Have a great day. Anxiety and depression may be confusing, especially if a person is struggling with both. These mental disorders can be comorbid, meaning someone with depression can also have anxiety symptoms, and vice versa. But first, what exactly is anxiety and depression? According to Medical News Today, anxiety disorders occur when a person regularly feels disproportionate levels of distress, worry, or fear over an emotional trigger, while depression is a mood disorder characterized by persistently low mood and a feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Living with both disorders can be challenging. Let's have a look at the different and common symptoms of anxiety and depression. Some anxiety symptoms are, but not limited to, excessive and ongoing worry and tension, an unrealistic view of problems, a sense of impending danger, panic, or doom, restlessness or fatigue, the need to go to the bathroom frequently, and insomnia. Some depression symptoms are, but again, not limited to, the feeling of being hopeless, the loss of interest in things or activities you once enjoyed, appetite changes and weight fluctuations, insomnia or hypersomnia, suicidal thoughts or attempts, and self-harming. Some common symptoms between the two appear to be insomnia, fatigue, and irritability, all of which impair your ability to perform everyday tasks. Both mental disorders, although different, share symptoms, making it difficult to understand which is which. The differences can be observed in how anxiety and depression manifests. Anxiety disorders are oriented towards the future. It is characterized by excessive fear and worry that in turn will affect the person's behavior. This occurs when people overestimate the danger in situations. In severe cases, people will avoid the situation that causes them anxiety. Individuals can experience sensations of impending doom or feeling on edge 24-7. If the anxiety disorder is not controlled on time, people can experience panic attacks and their daily function will become affected. Depressive disorders, on the other hand, are oriented towards the past. People tend to fixate on negative situations that impacted them. Individuals experience diminished interest in most activities, if not all. 
Physically, depressed people can exhibit psychomotor retardation. This includes slowed speech and decreased movement. Depression also affects sleeping patterns. People will either sleep too little, which can lead to insomnia, or too much, which can lead to hypersomnia. Individuals with depression have feelings of worthlessness, guilt, or emptiness. In severe cases, people will have recurrent thoughts of death, suicide, or make attempts to do so. We hope this video helps you understand what you or a loved one may be going through. Please keep in mind that if you are struggling with either or both disorders, you are not alone. Asking for help does not make you weak, so please don't feel ashamed to do so. So don't feel ashamed to get help when you need it. If you're experiencing any of this, y'all have a great day.